The individual islands of Inazuma offer each of their own quirky, unique, and interesting stories and overall design and aesthetics. And of all the islands of Inazuma, we've yet to find out what lies within the misty and ever so foggy mountains known as Tsurumi Island. And we've yet to piece together the segmented lore that Mihoyo placed so carefully to keep us waiting and staying on the game. Hey guys, what's up? Aru! And in this video, I'll be discussing Tsurumi Island and what we could expect to see and find once it's released. As always, I'll be placing timestamps for you guys to skip over whatever you want to watch first, but I'll keep this video as cohesive as possible to keep you guys from getting sidetracked along the way. Now, I know this isn't exactly in 2.2 because we, we, have, <laughs> we have no idea what's coming in 2.2 but I might as well put it here just in case it actually is. So here are the 5 things to expect about Tsurumi Island or in patch 2.2. There's gonna be an interesting bonus at the end so either skip or watch the video completely. Starting off, the only description we've been given about this island is that it's a mysterious island and shrouded in fog. No one has set foot here in many long years. Now that quote doesn't have much to go over and foggy island that no one's ever been to for so long doesn't really say anything. But to me, the key feature of this island is the dense fog that completely covers it. Here's another quote from the Adventurers Guild on Inazuma named Furia Noburu. He's the guy wandering around near Catherine and he states, Further down, you will be in the southern Inazuma. This is a place that is constantly shrouded by fog. It sure doesn't look like anything good from this side of the ocean. While I'm curious about what exactly is hiding in the thick fog, I wouldn't suggest going there. Another fog description. Hmm. So far we haven't had any fog islands just yet apart from one of the events that we recently had. If you can remember that time at the Golden Apple Archipelago where we tried to navigate our way through the fog and remember that corner of the archipelago where we traveled through illusory rocks and fake currents also covered in fog. Now a new island with its main feature being fog is going to be quite the interesting and spooky mechanic. There isn't else much to be said apart from that but I am still really excited for what's to come with just the new feature being fog. Next, the Magu Kenki is the puppet boss we first fought against in the Golden Apple Archipelago. And it's said that the Magu Kenki was washed into the archipelago some years ago or maybe hundreds of years ago. The puppet sword was specifically described to do a special technique called the Tengu Sweeper. Now do you know what else does the Tengu Sweeper as well as disappearing hundreds of years ago? That's right, the Yogo Tengu and the Oni. And to be more specific, Teruyo who is also a Tengu and Iwakura Doke who is also an Oni. Now whether or not the two of them are still alive in this timeline, we don't know. But from the Emblem of Severed Fate artifact set, we can kind of conclude that they're still alive in a sense. Apart from Iwakura Doke, who invented the Magu Kenki and then went somewhere or just disappeared altogether. And as yokai spirits go, we have no idea how long they can survive. Again, this is just speculation, but based on lore and story, the Yogo Tengu exiled themselves after the dark incident hundreds of years ago. This was due to the death of the Kitsune Saigu and their failure to protect her. The Oni from the Mikoshi clan merely disbanded but didn't die. From this, we could expect more iterations of the Magu Kenki, either on a smaller or much larger scale. And meeting more races and other yokai of Inazuma is also something we should be excited for. And speaking of other yokai and onis, we can also expect a certain oni to make an appearance on the island. Mikoshi Chiyo was a powerful and very stunning oni, as well as a very treasured friend of the shogun. Her disappearance was also due to the disaster incident, and from what we know, she was consumed by a so-called sin that made her fight against the shogun involuntarily. And within their battle, the shogun severed Chiyo's sword hand and one of her horns. She then left and ran into the forest never to be seen again. Her whereabouts are still unknown and only rumors of her death were stated. So we can expect to either find some remnants of her going there or maybe in Helioscopium, Mikoshi Chiyo herself. We will however meet her with an amputated arm because of her battle with the shogun hundreds of years ago. But we can make a quick story that she met the Tengu and got a prosthetic arm. That's pretty badass, honestly. And hopefully, inhales copium intensely, she can be a playable character. 
Another speculation I have is that she'll be a boss fight like Azada or Senora. As for which of the two happens, I actually want the former just because of more characters. As we all know, the Fatui is always involved in every crevice of Devat. But what kind of Fatui can we expect from the mysterious island of Tsurumi? Well, none other than the also mysterious Scaramouche. And we might also get some more detail in regards to what exactly happened to Senora. For me, if there's no body to be found, they're not dead yet. And who's to say that Senora just boiled an egg and just resurrected, right? And if I were to be a little more greedy, I'd also expect to see more about Child and his backstory, specifically that of how he got his vision. As for Scaramouche, we can find out more about his story of being the prototype puppet of Ball herself. And we could also expect to know more about Ball and the process of making puppets along the way. Suffice to say, we could also find information about our chief alchemist friend, Albedo. Finding more clues about the Abyss is always a safe bet somewhere along the story, but Surumi Island is the perfect candidate for harboring some secrets of the Abyss Order and the mysteriously destroyed land of Kanria. If we look into the Mist Splitter's lore, Takamine, the Mist Splitter himself, was overwhelmed by the Dark Army who through description flooded him like a mist, and his sword, named ironically the Mist Splitter, even when it was broken, Tahamine kept slashing through the mist-like dark army. Perhaps this was where some of them still were after the incident. Maybe they ran away and ended up in Tsurumi Island. Or maybe the island was a rally point for a short respite before another dark incident. Or maybe this was where they come from, like a spawn point or where they originated. We'll find out soon enough, I suppose. And now for the bonus, which is the three moon sisters of Teyvat. Now I haven't read into this much yet as of recording, but there were three bright moons in the sky named Arya, Sonnet, and Kanon. Sisters who were parted by death in a great catastrophe. These moon sisters were said to be older than that of the Geo Archon, and that they were born way before the very bedrock of Liyue Harbor was formed. They were also charged with navigating the heavens above by alternating between each other on a silver carriage. And if the reins of the carriage were not promptly passed properly from one to the other, a terrible disaster would occur. Going back to the dark disaster incident we were talking about earlier, this could be how it all started and that no one, not even the Shogun or even Ball herself, wouldn't know about. Or did she? Judging from all that happened in Inazuma, this could be a rather plausible theory. Granted, we don't have any other possible lead on what actually happened 500 years ago and separating the Cataclysm and the Dark Disaster in some way or maybe they're connected in some way. But the story about the three moons in Liyue kind of align with the islands of Surumi. There's no official map of the island just yet, but judging from the three peaks of the island that we can see, from as near as I could get, it's not too far-fetched to start assuming so. And the coincidental event of the Dark Disaster in the previous story of the Three Moons seems pretty iffy to me as well. But this last bit is just me rambling again, hence the bonus. So I'll leave this up to you guys to decide. And there it is, the 5 things you could expect from patch 2.2 or maybe 2.3. But all in all, it's the 5 things to expect from Tsurumi Island. Now I don't want to move on to Sumeru just yet because we have so many more updates to come and the plot holes in 2.0 and 2.1 leave a lot to be desired before we even think about going to Sumeru. Leave a like and subscribe for more of my content and comment down below what you guys think is coming in 2.2 or what else could be coming in Tsurumi Island. I'll see you guys later. Bye!